All right, guys, what's up? We got uh, another Gold Cycle 7 round of 16 match, because apparently these just don't ever end. This time it's going to be Solaire Club taking on Grill, a.k.a. Yes. Skaldarne, which is what they're listed on the Hauntour website. And as you can see, a lot of tags on the Hellborn team that are not that. <clears throat> they're tagged up as Team Foxy Proxy, which is something I've seen before, so I'm pretty sure this team has been in Gold Division before, but we're quickly bounced down to Silver. And I believe that's the case once again. This is a silver promotion, and uh, we'll see how they do up against the Solaire Club. One of the better teams uh, from Hauntor Season 3 Gold, and one that's improved significantly as the season has worn on. So, Cycle 7 once again. Going to be an attempt to get back to, to get to Diamond Division. They have never been there before, despite the fact that they probably earned it at least once. But, a uh, new cycle, new chance, and uh, I'm sure they're pumped up thinking let's uh, let's get it off to a good start and maybe we can ascend to diamond for cycle eight but standing in their way will be Skaldarne, whose name i'm not going to say ever again i'm going to just call them grill because that's a really horrible name to try to pronounce and yes i still am a little bit sick so apologies for that there might be the occasional sniffle and maybe even some coughing that happens i will try to keep that to a minimum i have a nice glass of warm water here and hopefully that will assist me when it comes to not making this exceptionally gross for all of you people. <clears throat> anyway, that's going to be uh, first couple of bands for Legion. Will be Ophelia and Swiftblade. So Solar Club taking out the Skill Blade, which is still considered a really powerful hero, even post patch. And uh, apparently, Jisman not interested in first picking it, so he just wants to take it out of the pool. Ophelia ban is kind of interesting to be honest. I don't think that hero is really early ban worthy unless you have a notable Ophelia player on your team, and it's possible that the Hellborn team do. I'm just unaware of it. Yeah, as you see, actually, why ban Ophelia? No one is playing it, lol. So, uh, that's, that's strange. Maybe just a waste ban from Jisman. Maybe he says, oh, look, we don't have an Ophelia player. Noob McCube does not play Ophelia. I think I've seen him play it once or twice. I don't think it's gone particularly well. Uh, so they're just figuring, hey, just ban it. It's not going to hurt us. It might hurt them. So it's, uh, it's a fine ban. Hellborn and out Silhouette and Bubbles, both uh, very powerful heroes, of course. And heroes we see a lot in the current metagame. Magmus, Glacius, and Tempest will be the selections for Solaire Club, so lots of teamfight right there. Not too much late game quite yet, but they got some good uh, AoE presence and some gank, and a little bit of push as well with those Tempest minions. Hellborn going to go much more the gank-oriented route, Engineer, Flux, and Prisoner. Now, if they can combo their ultimates fantastically, they have ridiculous wombo combo potential, perhaps even more than the Legion team, despite the fact that you know they have a Tempest Lockdown plus Glacius ulti and Magmus ulti for ridiculous amounts of damage. Nice. Engineer Field into the Flux ultimate, and the Prisoner ultimate could potentially do a, re a just insane amount of damage, and we'll see if they can successfully pull that off here, or uh, if the Legion side will be able to avoid it. NG Flux also a very good lane, so that's a nice combo that uh, pairs well as the game goes on, with their ultimates combining quite well, and of course in the mid-game, if you have solid communication, then you can definitely turn that lane into a very difficult one to contend with for the opposing team. Pulls into releases, into keg stuns, into turrets, there's a lot of damage that can come out there, and uh, one stun, as well as a lot of slowing as well. And between uh, between those two heroes' abilities, they can really do a lot of work. Legion going to ban out Soul Stealer, Revenant, and Kinesis in their second banning stage, removing the annoyance of Revenant, the burst potential of Kinesis, and the carry of Soul Stealer. Hellborn going to take out Clanks, the Dark Lady, and Rally, so focusing a little bit more on the short laners, considering Legion side have not picked theirs up yet. Now they have, but it's an interesting one. And, uh... <coughs> bans for both sides, making a fair degree, de fair degree of sense. Rally's one I've been kind of crapping on for a really long time, and I have been for since forced to reevaluate my position. Uh, when Rally gets picked up, I think it was, when he gets picked up once or twice in a cycle, he never, he like never wins. He's really, really, has a really, really bad record. But when he gets picked up uh, a few times, usually by a team that knows how to use him and knows when to use him, he actually does quite well. So his overall numbers in Diamond Division are actually pretty solid. And so perhaps I'm moving my position on Rally to bad hero, or from bad hero to not great hero, good hero under the right circumstances. And I think that's a little bit more fair to him, maybe, but, uh... Regardless of that hero, because he was not picked up in this game, let's not talk about it. Legion going to finish off their draft with Midas and Vindicator. So, two heroes we almost never see. I believe they've both been seen in Season 3. Uh, but neither one of them quite common, and I think for good reason. Midas' spells can be awfully difficult to land. I believe he did get some changes post-patch. I don't remember what they were, so I can't tell you what they are. But, uh, you know, 
Apparently Solaire Club figuring like he is a viable hero right now. It's going to be in Jisman's hands, and he is their mid lane player, so that's likely going to be a mid Midas. Army of Mums is going to be on the suicide Magmus, because apparently he's decided to stop playing Kraken. <laughs> My endless badgering of his Kraken play has successfully caused the Solaire Club to stop picking that hero for him. So well, there's that, or maybe, I don't know, maybe he just uh, doesn't want to play it. Maybe I don't mean anything to these people. It's possible. Hellborn finished off their draft with the Kraken and the Rhapsody, so they're going for a dual support here up against a jungle in Noob McNoob's Tempest, a hero that he's played a lot and he's quite good with, so expecting some nice things out of that uh, Tempest jungler. Hellborn with the dual support definitely have the potential to make stuff happen. They have a lot of relatively early game support abilities and uh, heroes in general. Now, the only difficulty they might have is their carry potential is really, really lacking right here as they didn't pick up anything that conceivably could be extremely powerful in the late game. We're going to see a four-man gang squad from the Hellborn team, but the Legion are going to be well aware that this is happening. Heck, Hook actually does not connect on a cannon orb, and that definitely wouldn't have a kill if uh, Simon, Simon on, had managed to get a little bit more range on it, unfortunately. Cannot do so, and it looks like we'll be seeing an aggressive tri lane right here. We also don't have a traditional suicide hero except for Kraken, but he's cl clearly at the top lane, so... This is definitely going to be an aggro try. It has Rhapsody and Engineer hanging down here with Flux. It looks like Prisoner is going to head over to the middle lane. And that's okay. I would actually prefer to see the Prisoner in this bottom lane. If you can land a hook, especially on somebody like uh, a Vindicator, you would easily be able to get kills. Now, the Solar Club has noticed what they're doing, and they're actually going to rotate, which is another really nice move. They're going to put uh, Cannondorf on that carry Vindicator in the middle lane, going to pair him with Glacius to make sure he gets some pretty solid farm, and Prisoner probably not going to be too happy about that situation. Midas in the bottom lane, sort of playing a suicide role right here, as he has his elemental warp to try to evade potential ganks, and uh, without the shackle, I believe, which would stop the elemental warp from Brizzard 945, my guess is they won't be killing too, they won't be killing Jisman too much in this bottom lane, and looks like immediately they're going to rotate over, so the aggro tri lane will quickly disband, and it's another good call from uh, Grill, as they realize pretty quickly they don't need to have three support, or three heroes down here. And it's much better to send Rapti to the middle lane where she can assist Prisoner and make sure he doesn't get completely shut down, which was probably what was going to happen if she didn't move. <coughs> so this middle lane, very easy to see it going in favor of the Hellborn team, actually. They have Glacius and Vindicator, relatively squishy heroes. Between the two of them, they have one slow and one immobilized. Obviously, this Vindicator has no CC tools, and that's really been his big problem. Compare that to the Hellborn team, you got a Staccato Stun plus a Dance Floor, that's good damage. And then the Shackle going to slow people down and stuff, so if Prisoner can hit hooks right here, it's going to result in a fair number of kills, I would imagine, on either Cannondorf or uh, Stand March. And they're going to have to play relatively passively and safe if they want to make sure that they don't die. Top lane, Magma's taking on Kraken. And this is a matchup that can definitely go either way, depending on which uh, player manages to get the better CS score and uses their harassing mechanic to greater effect. You can see them both at about two-thirds of their health. The Splash does... Uh, you know, splash damage from Kraken is uh, passive, of course, and that will be annoying for Magmus. And then, of course, Magmus's volcanic touch means that Kraken will every so often take a pretty good amount of match damage when Magmus gets a creep kill. So we'll see who uh, takes the victory here. Bottom lane actually just going to be in trouble. He's going to get the bloodlust, in fact, onto the engineer. He's going to be dying for it, but that's definitely a trade you'll take, especially considering this is a two versus one. So all of a sudden, 500 uh, gold on the Midas. He'll have boots unless he wants to buy a teleport. And my guess is he will. So probably going to look to finish off the Amulet Exile here. And grab a TP. Play like Rhapsody getting forced out of the jungle a little bit here as Noob, Noob has gone the aggressive jungle route. And we're going to see some collapse on him, actually. Engineer is coming in after that death. T TP to the second tier tower. And we'll see if they can actually finish him off. The Glacial Blasts do go through. Kegstun still hits. They do miss the hook, though. And Noob McNoob is going to try to walk this off and actually might be able to do so. Energy spells are currently on cooldown. There's a freeze on to Engineer. And this could get turned around, but they don't really have enough mana or uh, levels to chase down that engineer, so he will get out just fine. I'm sort of going to abandon Flux in this bottom lane against Midas, who's uh, farming not well, but not the worst. And actually, the additional damage from his right clicks as a result of that transmute, that was the one change that I remember. You will get additional bonus damage on auto attacks uh, against targets that are stunned. So actually, Midas can go in for this, and he's going to get the kill. Yeah, that's a little bit too much aggression there from Flux with no support. And it is a really, really tanky hero, but early on especially, Midas can do a lot of damage. So, clearly Flux unaware of uh, how much danger he was actually in, and just been picking up a second kill right there. He's at 330 GPM, and Os, Os on this Flux is uh, just above 300, so 
That early advantage has gone the way of Solaire Club, actually, as despite the fact that Hellborn focused a lot of their resources in that bottom lane, Flux is not really getting too much out of it. And Engie gonna return <coughs> down here. We'll make sure Flux doesn't get destroyed, but missing a CS right there. In fact, both parties are. And the Solaire Club right off the bat looking pretty solid. <coughs> She's perhaps looking for a freeze. Can't really find it though. He currently has his freeze and his thunder blast, so I would say that is definitely the correct build in pretty much all situations. Get those first two on the first couple of levels. After that, you may want to take your passive at some point if you have especially mana dependent heroes on your team, which the Legion side definitely do. So uh, my guess would be that we're going to see a quickly maxed passive from Glacius right here to assist his team, not only with their regen, of course, but with their overall mana pool. Midas, Tempest, Magmas, they will all benefit greatly from it. Even Vindicator can do some more spam if he has the a larger mana pool and more regen. And this Tempest kind of hanging down here, looking for an opening. Still level 4, which means no ultimate for him. And Flux quite tanky. They probably would rather go for the Engineer right here if they can. Yep, and the Glacial Blast is going to come through. Midas combo is there. Couple auto attacks. Should be able to finish him off. Yep. Just when going to be able to get that kill. Release goes through. Doesn't actually hit Tempest, though. And he will be able to walk on by, so... Invis Rune used to good effect. And uh, Noob McNoob having an impact early on. This is a hero in Tempest that some people think can't gank, but definitely can. And doesn't necessarily need to gank. You can certainly pay, play him extremely passively if you'd want, if you'd prefer to do that. But he has the potential to come out of the woods and make some action happen, as we just saw. So definitely, definitely good hero. Canador from this middle lane, 315 gold per minute for him. Simon on at just 145, so despite the general presence of Rhapsody in this lane, Prisoner's actually been more or less destroyed, and actually he could be some trouble right here. He's taking a lot of attacks, and that'll be a kill. Kandendorf picking up a, no a number of, uh, wow, a lot of damage. I'm not sure where the sentence is going, but they also kill Rhapsody, as here comes Arbor and Mums with the Lava Surge. And this is what happens when you cast and you're sick, boys, because your brain lags about three seconds behind the gameplay. It's always good. <clears throat> that was fine. That was totally fine. I was like, I have a bunch of energy, and then I sat down to do this, and I'm like, I have just decided to not yeah. want to be able to think about anything. <laughs> so feel free to mute it and cast it yourself. By the way, that's fine. I won't hold it against you. Crack in the top lane. Gonna be able to take out some creeps right here, put some good damage into this tier 1 tower. And uh, port comes through. That's presumably from the Mi Magmus. Yes, it's from the Magmus, not Midas. And that's going to be really confusing as this game goes on. Anyway, 5-1 to one overall hero, hero kill advantage for the Solaire Club. Not a huge surprise. This is definitely a series that they should win and a team that they should beat. Not to say that they can't lose by any means, but uh, no doubt the favorites coming in. Regular denizens of Gold Division compared to a solar promoted team right here, which early on is looking like it's having some trouble. Anyway, silence on Vindicator whenever you stop the initiation onto Magmus, but his combo is going to be completely missed. He gets pulled back by Flux, gets the Elemental Warp away. Top lane actually it's Bromance that's in some trouble. There's no mana on Tempest right now, as he's already used his Glacial Blast. He can get pulled back in. Release is there as well. Noob McDoo finally does get the mana for it. The question is, will they have enough dam damage? Finally, Midas combo looks like it might be coming through. Noob McNoob's still going to die. Nice avoid of the keg stun from Midas right there, and he tries to get away. Elemental Warp will be sufficient to get him out of there. And that's it. So in the meantime, actually top lane, they did they did lose Bromance, and it was Stan March and Kandorf, uh getting the assist for that. So presumably that Vindicator ultimate was dual purpose, top lane and bottom lane, as we didn't see a Kraken ultimate come out, of course. And we're absolutely going to find this Midas right here, and they will manage to finish him off, so nice jump from the Hellborn team. And middle lane, actually, we could see a jump on to Vindicator. Nice totem right there as he uses the charging to silence him out. Release the crack and goes through. Will it be enough damage? Yes, it will. As Kandorf gets picked off in the middle lane. And that's often the problem with Vindicator, is if he gets caught, he will die. He is extremely squishy, and he has no escape mechanism or stun or slow. He has the silence, but that's not really something you want to use just to stop the game. Because global silence is a really, really powerful spell. And, well, Midas wants to return this, but won't be able to find it. So, Kandorf in this middle lane, a little bit too far up it seems. He still is the second highest farmer in the game, actually, he's cracking on the top lane, really dominated army of mums on this Magmus. 
We still have 300 GPM, but cracking at 370, uh, despite that death. And actually, he's going to pop a haster right here, charge away, and stun will be there from Magmus, but Kraken can chase him down. He's got a haster and active for plenty of time. Army going to need to find the gang, but here the juke, but it's not going to be there. Trying to go around that tree and survive, but obviously nowhere near the amount of space he needed to create to get away from that Kraken. Rhapsody, going to get run down by Glacius here a little bit. Glacius only level 3, though, and Rhapsody is currently level 5, so she will drop a ward aside, actually. Out of range of both of the Word of Sight and the Word of Rev. They might have seen that being placed, though, so we'll see if Stan March can find the counter. I believe in you, Stan March. I think you can do it. And Golden Experience actually had an even up right here. So we had an early lead for Solaire Club, but that's more or less gone away entirely. And this is looking like a game. Now, as I said earlier on, the strap for the Hellborn team is very, very mid game focused, so they're going to have to do. They probably did should have done a little bit better than they did in the lane phase, considering they're running a dual support, and they have a bunch of early game mid-game heroes, but, you know, nice D-Ward right there, so Stan March does uh, fulfill all of my hopes and dreams. He is exactly the man I thought him to be. And, anyway, uh, so they're going to have, you know, a relatively even game here as the laning phase starts to end. But the other issue that they could uh, encounter middle as stop lane, it could be an eruption right on Kraken's face. That'll be a kill on the Bromance, so they're shutting down the opposing team's best farmer, which is obviously the hero you want to address most. Nice, uh, nice good stuff there. Bottom lane, it's the silence going off as they manage to finish off Flux right there. A lot of good stuff going through. The totem is there as well. Obviously, that will perplex if uh, if you're in range of it when you pop the global silence. <coughs> The Legion have overrun a right, top tower to fall in the meantime. Bottom tower also taking a lot of damage right here. And the stun will go through. Actually, that's a freeze right there. And Glacius going to try to get the last auto attack. It is a brain drain. And that goes through. And Kendor picks the kill. Two teleports coming in, though. Tempest Hole going to be used right on top of them. We'll see if the second one's canceled. It's not. Both of these heroes are going to get locked the down. Legion the issue is they're kind of damn tanky because it's cracking and flux. All of a sudden, the Legion team will be the one. It's a lot of trouble. Tempest going to fall, and so will Kendor. Glacius trying to get away, but a two man Midas combo. That's doing a lot of damage. Prisoner Hook going to miss Stan Man, or Stan Marsh, right there. And they will manage to finally finish off that kill, but not before Mag Midas finishes off his double tap. Onto Kraken. Nice blocks! Oh my god! What a player! That's hilarious. Wow. That that was beautiful from Noob McNoob right there. <laughs> uh, that was quite funny. I don't know what you do against that man. You just you you do what they did, and then in in all chat you tip your cap, and you're just like, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Although I guess that was mostly the Legion team, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh well. I mean, that's just a situation where prisoners sitting there and going, I'm gonna die. It was nice knowing you fellas, and the uh, Solar Club finishing off a really really good fight right there as they take something like four heroes in exchange for two. So they don't want to be losing Cannondorf as often as they are. He's already get two deaths but at least they're getting counter kills out of it, which is better than the first time he died. <laughs> Still very funny. Anyway, Kandorf will be down in the bottom lane once again as he rotated here from the mid, trying to secure some safe farm. And we're going to see the Hellborn continuously try to pressure him, which is definitely the right call. Vindicator here that can dish out a ridiculous amount of damage if you let him just sit in the back and, and right-click places, and if you let him just sit in free farm as well. But you can address him quite easily, so getting aggressive on Vindy is definitely the correct path. And Glacial Blast is going to be down there. Eruption getting channeled as well. He's going to drop in on a three heroes, and they're all dead. Just from picking up a double tap right there, and Rhapsody will be the last one to fall. We'll see who gets this one, too. It looks like Noob McNoob. Yes, it's going to be the Tempest, who finished off a double tap of his own, and an excellent initiation right there from uh, Army of Bums on that Magnus. Did it perfectly. Charging up an ultimate, hitting a, la a Lava Surge on, I think, pretty much everybody. And looking, uh, looking real good right there. Have 
run a Legion FOB. Anyway, top tier one tower gonna fall right here as Kraken finally manages to push it down. He is currently level 11, so he's gonna have access to his level 2 ultimate. And that's gonna be very useful for the Hellborn team. But they really need to make something happen because this game is actually quickly spiraling out of control for them, and this is the situation in which they're supposed to be at an advantage. This team is not built to go late, as I've mentioned a couple of times. They are built to win now, and you are going to make that a lot more difficult on yourself if you're going to be down by 8k gold experience. Of course, they're just throwing a hook. Why not? Always good. Kraken does finish up his PK right there, and the Legion team will be unaware of it, as they have a Ward of Sight up top, but that's not going to spot him with the teleport, and perhaps they can use that to catch somebody off guard. Now, he's going to go down here, and the Ward of Sight from Stanmarch did spot him, moving into the bottom river, so they're well aware that Kraken is in this middle lane, and they should be aware that he has a portal key as well. Good timing on it. 14 minutes, of course, especially considering he's already gotten Steam Boots Bottle and Mystic Vestments on top of his initial uh, Stout Shield and uh, his hack. Axe, hatchet, one of them things. And my disillusions will be cleaned up right here, so it's going to be a pretty heavy four man push from the Hellborn team, and I'm okay with that to be honest. They have a lot of ultimates off cooldown, and they need to start using them. They also need to get some objectives on this map because you can see they're being out pushed, and that's not exactly what you want to do. Magmus looking to find an eruption right here. I don't think Kraken saw him actually, so they're not aware of where Magmus is, and they're going to initiate on this when Army of Mums feels like it's comfortable to go. No, in fact, they're just going to down the tower and back off. Feeling like they have no, uh, there's no pressure for them to take a fight right now, even though they definitely could. All right, here goes the eruption charge right onto two, and they're gonna both get hit by the lava surge and the mag, the, the Midas uh, follow up is just way too much for anything. They will get the shackle down. I don't think energy field hit though. Keg time actually pushes Midas away. We'll get pulled back in, and that'll be a kill. And just been finally dying here, ending a savage six streak. So, really good amount of crack, a gold for Kraken once again, as he's the only player on the Hellborn team to have even decent farm. The second highest farmer is that. Flux at 260 GPM. And something that I actually hadn't mentioned before, but the Prisoner and Engineer can actually have a really, really good interaction with the Energy Field and the Prisoner Hook, especially once Prisoner gets a PK. You can help people through those uh, through those Energy Field barriers, and it will do a lot for your ability to win team fights. Obviously, the the Perplex and the Purge really, really valuable, and it's a good amount of damage to it, I think, as well. 50 100 per second when you're inside it, and you have 100 true damage as well, so that's going to go straight through all your armor. Not bad. So you look at the Hellborn team, and they definitely have the combo potential. I mean, even Kraken charging people back into stuff. Now you got his portal key, it's going to be a lot easier. A flux NG as well, and some defensive capability with Rhapsody. The problem is they really haven't been able to execute all that well. And when they have taken bigger team fights, they've generally lost more heroes than they play than they have uh, killed, which is obviously not what you're aiming for anyway. Uh, engineer. I'm uh, not sure what your plan was there, buddy, but it wasn't a great one. Magnus will find a two-man lava surge as well as he's gotten his portal key. Silence comes out from Vindicator. He's going to kill Creep, Creep right there, because why, why not? Rhapsody, nice ultimate right there. And it'll be Kraken ulti pulling everybody into the Flux ultimate as well. Three-man lava surge is going to be significant. Glacius just going to walk on out and survive as everybody on the Hellborn team dies. So really, really well played there from Solaire Club. And they're calling GG's in the Hellborn team, which is... Well... Alright, I mean, I think, to be honest, that's maybe a little bit premature, but I can certainly understand after an engagement like that, you don't even kill the Glacius. You're, you're not feeling great about your chances in that game, especially with the lineup that was constructed the way it was, so. It's going to be Solaire Club taking a one-game series uh, advantage, and we'll see if they can finish it off in two, or if the guys on Grill will be able to force a third and final game, but... Uh, Based on that one, I think uh, Solar Club have a pretty good amount, amount of momentum riding into game two, and it's going to take a fair bit to unseat them, because they look like they're playing pretty well. Cannondorf, a little bit slippery, but uh, Army of Mums hitting a lot of stuff. Jisman just absolutely taking over that game, as he had 403 GPM, 10, 3, and 6 on that Midas, and you could see the amount of damage he was doing in those uh, fights, especially on multiple heroes. It was kind of ridiculous. And uh, maybe Magmus, or sorry, maybe Midas has some significant competitive viability after all. We'll have to see. Anyway, uh, I'll be doing it for game one. We'll be moving on to game two in just a moment, guys.